Peyton, why don't you read us off? Sounds good. Um, just overall general feelings over the last couple of days. You know, have you had time to, to kind of either let it go or let it soak in? Just the whole experience. Yeah, I would say still processing it, Hayden. Um, you know, it starts with the disappointment of losing. You know, anytime you lose the last game, especially in the postseason, it hurts. Um, but I think that hurt is probably um, softened by the overall uh, pride I think I and we feel about the way in which this group of players played and competed from day one and how resilient they were throughout the course of the season, the obstacles they overcame, the way they grew together, the way they played together, um, the moments that they created along the way is I know some of the memories I'll cherish from the season, even though it didn't end the way we wanted. I, I concur with a lot of what Chris just said. Um, you know, the one we were trying to just tell the writers down there, the, the season never winds down. It just comes to a crashing halt. And it's kind of hard to, you know, you're one day you're in New York playing, you're packed for Houston, and then the next night you're home. And it, it's, it's, it's always the same every year regardless of when you end. It just happens quickly, and then you try to process, but it's kind of hard. But like Chris said, there's a the disappointment that we – didn't win that last game but there's also a sense of pride in that how we played and I think organizationally I think we're in a position where we can take this group and get better and that's exciting so you said after the last game that you know you're kind of this should be a jumping off point right a lead a point to kind of go you've also had like the health issues but you said you're feeling good did this team kind of reignite kind of your I don't know your desire because you love the game, but just you're feeling kind of you more youthful, you're more energized by the by the youth. That would take a lot. <laughs> um, I would say though, that like if if you're a fan of baseball and you didn't like watching this team and how they played, that's probably you're probably looking to not like something. I mean, they're easy to like from from my standpoint, from Chris's standpoint, Cherney fans. They're a good group of guys, really great group of guys. And they, you know, winning wasn't always very easy for us. It didn't mean we couldn't, but they, they did never back down ever. It, for next year, are you you're, re you're ready to go for next year already? Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. I need some time to, to. I need some time to. But, I'll, when when the time comes, I'll be raring to go. Chris, with this team, you have so many young guys. I mean, we had like 18, 16 guys making their major league debuts. Is that kind of a blessing and a curse because you have so many guys that are ready, but also you're going to have to make some tough decisions about you know, who guys are going to find the field, if guys aren't going to find the field. Is that kind of exciting, but also a little tough? Yeah, there are a lot of things to work through. I think one of the things I want to make sure to point out is that the goal isn't to be young. The goal is to win. Right, and we were the way in which we were able to win this year was by relying upon a lot of young players. Now, the exciting thing for us as we look forward is that that group, you know, we have a lot of continuity on our roster. We only have one one major league free agent. We can bring a lot of that group back. We have a young, healthy, um, deep, and mature farm system that hopefully can help us contribute at the major league level. Gives us the opportunity to examine trades. And we have you know, some financial flexibility. So you put all of those things together, and it gives us a great opportunity as we head into the offseason to build you know, what we believe will be a really con competitive team next year. You mentioned the, the, the financial situation. You mentioned the trade situation. Do you think you'd be aggressive? I mean, last year, it was kind of like you wanted to you know, give these guys a chance. You only brought in, I think, Maley and maybe Brian. Mm -hmm. and this year, you, know, you said there's an opportunity. Or do you think that, there's, that you'll be more aggressive this offseason? Well, we were aggressive in our attempts to bring players in last year, both in free agency and trades. We made significant offers to free agents that you know didn't work out or went somewhere else. We made meaningful trade offers. Some of those players got traded. A lot of them didn't. I expect that we will go into the offseason, again, trying to look at opportunities to improve the team. Now, where that leads is impossible to predict. The good news is it's only, what, October 21st, so we've got a lot of time to work through that. Is there any specific position or, or lineup spot that you're looking at more than other? Or well, the one place where we have a free agent is a catcher with Austin Hedges, so that's a place where we'll think about how do we address that appropriately and um, what's the best fit for our team there, including possibly bringing Austin back. You know, before um, the season ended, you'd said, like, you probably have a better idea of what this team's identity was now that the season's over. 
Now that it's over, looking back on what you guys did, what do you think this team's identity is right now? I think they, I think they took a, a lot of pride in playing the game correctly. And for that, me and the coaches, Chris Cherney, we, we were really proud of them. Um, you know, we didn't hit the ball at the ballpark very much. So for us to win, we had to get on base, create some havoc, while also trying to be intelligent, catch the ball defensively and pitch. And like I said, it's not easy because it'd be nice to separate some games sometimes where if somebody makes a mistake, it doesn't cost you a game. We didn't do that very often, but we still, we won 92 games. Um, but I pointed out to them the other day that this needs to be a jumping off point for us, not a feel good story. And, you know, we need to take this and get better. And with this group, it won't surprise me if they take that to heart. Oscar Gonzalez, of course, who just became a playoff saver of sorts with the walk off home run and then uh, to get you guys um, that big home win. What really, uh, what was his development like during the season? Because he's a guy who made his debut this year. Well, I think he's still developing. Um, which is okay. Uh, you know, he's an ultra aggressive hitter, and we tried not to ask him to do some things he couldn't do. I think the hope is as he accumulates at bats and some maturity, that like he'll start to be able to lay off this ball in here, which will make him more dangerous with the balls he can handle. And then you kind of see where it goes. I mean, I'm not sure we've seen Quan ceiling, as exciting as that is. Same with Jimenez. I mean, they've all proven that they can be really good everyday major league players, but we still think there's some growth there. Does that ability for them to develop still get you excited for what you're able to do with them moving forward? You better believe it. Yeah, because they're, they're, all the people you're talking about, they're great kids. They compete. They want to get better. They allow us to coach and we think they're going to get better. I mean, Stephen Kwan is, is a leader in the making. And this kid, kid does everything. He checks all, you know, he's want to put him in your pocket and take him home. <laughs> I, I realized that last offseason presented some unique challenges with uh, the, the labor stoppage. When you think about the calendar that you had to deal with last year, and, and hopefully, quote unquote, back to normal this year. What things did you want to accomplish last year during the winter that maybe you didn't have a chance to that you think maybe this year you, you can address? Well, it's exciting for us to think about the opportunity we have in front of us to partner with our players to help them, as Tito said, to continue to grow and develop um, heading into next season. Unfortunately, last year, we didn't really have that ability to do that. So in some ways, we were playing catch up once the lockout ended. This year, we don't have those obstacles. So I know, you know, our Tito, myself, our front office, our coaching staff are really excited, and we've already laid the foundation with a number of players to, to take advantage of the time we have in the off season to accelerate their development. I think we try to not just take advantage of when players are here, but when in, in the off season too. And like Chris said, last year was really frustrating, even from little things like where getting a, a funny text from Hedges after a fantasy football loss or something. But then the big things like talking about their winter program and what they're doing, we try to gain an advantage during the offseason, just like we do during the regular season. When, um, when you think about now that we're one year in on the PitchCom technology, do you have any overarching season-long thoughts on how well it worked? Do, do you want to see that continue to be instituted in the game? What are your thoughts on that? I think it's here to stay. Probably as it as it continues, it'll the technology will probably get better. Um, I thought it was I thought it quickened up the game, um, especially with the runner on second because I think that's where we all thought the game kind of came to a screeching halt, sometimes for good reason. But that, no, I think it worked really well, and I think it will work better as technology gets better. Chris, do you do you guys feel like you have a a unique advantage as we move away from defensive shifts where you've got guys on the infield in particular that are as rangy as they are, or maybe you don't have a glaring hole because you have to play under a certain set of rules now moving forward. I do think one of the, um, 
one of the things that the rule changes will impact is athleticism defensively for infielders. And we, as you pointed out, we have some really athletic infielders that are capable of making plays. So in the past, you know, when you could position players wherever, you would be able to make up for some of those shortcomings by positioning them in a particular place. Um, obviously, that's not going to be the case anymore with, with some of the shift restrictions. So that might have a chance to benefit us defensively. And one more for me. I, I know you, you, know, you referenced Austin is under a, a, a situation now where he's a, a free agent. The season just ended, but how far in advance do you have to figure out your off-season priorities, your timetable to get certain things done? How, is that stuff already kind of set for you, or do you take a little time to decompress before you figure out how you want to attack, you know, November, December? We've already started the planning. In fact, that happens, you know, while we continue to play games, we operate on parallel paths. One, you know, making sure we're prepared as possible for the games that are in front of us, but also begin laying the groundwork for off-season planning because once the season ends, whenever that might be, you have to jump immediately into that off-season mode. So we've got a good head start on that. We've, you know, we'll continue that work over the next few weeks and we'll be prepared once the World Series ends to be able to, to start to, to execute on that. When you talk about power and obviously you'd like more power, how much of that can come organically, just Oscar's growth and maybe Naylor? And how much do you have to go outside the organization to find it? I think we hope, when we talked about this the last group, you used the word organically. I think that's a good word. I think we want guys to learn how to hit and they grow into power. If they try for power before they know how to hit, that doesn't usually work to, to their benefit. Um, I think we have a number of guys that will grow into more power. Um, it's part of the fun of watching the development of our guys. You don't know where, where they, you know, they hit for high average, they hit for power, do they do both? Um, does one rob the other? We don't, we don't, you don't know all those, but, but they're, they're beginning to be answered. And fortunately for us, there was a lot of yeses and guys that we think we can get better with. I think one of our, um, you know what, let me, I think one of our challenges is to increase our offense, like we always want to, realizing that defensively how much that helped us win and not sacrificing that. Yeah, you said it is early, um, the all season just started for you guys, but with all the young talent you have, uh, are there any guys that you're really looking to lock in for the long run after what they did this year? So over the course of the offseason, we'll have an opportunity to explore those conversations with a number of individuals on the roster. One of the things that we will have to address is we have a number of players that are eligible for salary arbitration this winter. So we'll have a lot of con uh, contract conversations with that group and others as well. I know Tito probably won't want to talk about this, but the, you know, there's an opportunity for him to win manager of the year this year, given what he did. Yeah. Um, and maybe you can allude to it, but... Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, just the, the job that he did with this yeah. team, is he deserving of that? I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that? Um, In my mind, he's deserving, deserving of manager of the year every year. Um, and the job that Tito and the coaching staff did this year was once again extraordinary. Uh, I'll let Tito speak to it specifically, but this was a unique challenge with an incredibly young group of players. And I think, you know, when you engage with that group and hear the dialogue in the clubhouse, they would be the first to tell you just how helpful it was to have Tito leading the way uh, with his experiences, with the way he leads, the environment he creates. So, um, you know, we would not have had the success that we've had this year without Tito leading the way. Yeah, that's, you know, I remember when I first came here, what, 10 years ago, Chris asked me if I wanted to have that in my contract as a bonus. And I said, no, because that's not something I feel strongly about. Um, when those types of things do happen, it's an organizational award and gives me a chance to brag about other people in the organization, which I hope, so I hope that happens, but that's why. Can you, can you like, talk a little bit about the, the experience of managing this team though? I mean, it was, like you said, a young team, very different, kind of may, maybe very different for you, but it seemed like you enjoyed the hell out of it. You know, early on, Chris and Cherney sat me down and I mean, I'm way back into the winter and explained where we were organizationally, because we were protecting, I think, a record number of players. But they walked me through it so I could wrap my head around it. 
and then I can take that to the coaches and explain that to them. So we, and the biggest thing I think, and this maybe towards the end of spring training, I remember talking to the guys and I'm like, hey, we can't be afraid to be young. Like, I, I just didn't want us to get in, like bringing in a couple guys that were maybe, I know I use the term muddy the waters, maybe that wasn't a great term. But if we were gonna be young, let's, let's be young and see how we do. Because nobody had a crystal ball, myself included. But it was really enjoyable and gratifying to watch so many guys never back down from a challenge, find ways to get better, find ways to care about a ball club when they're still trying to find their footing in our league. That was, yeah, heck yeah, that was good. It is a challenge, you know, for you as a coach and you would approach it maybe differently with the young players. And you spoke of, you know, those things, but could you think of something that maybe they gave to you? Um, what I just spoke about, they, when they, when they, the way they approach the game, I enjoy, I mean, our games were like, you know, we didn't spread many games out. So it's like you're kind of, I know I've tried to explain, like your stomach's in your throat, wouldn't change that for the world. I loved and respected the way these guys played the game. And I'm confident that now with experience, the game can kind of slow down for them, but not the way they play it. And that, that's, that's going to be an important step for us next year is pl making teams try to play at our pace. And our pace doesn't slow down. But with experience, the game does, like processing the game does slow down for guys. Run up to you a bit about, yeah, you know, developing power. But uh, you guys were able to, as you know, you were able to win a lot of games playing small ball. Do you feel that can be pretty much, you can still win just by uh, the old-fashioned way, singles, doubles, running the base as well? I think it's up to us to take the players we have and try to get their strengths and put them in a position where they can succeed. If we have guys, like when Fran Mill was here, we didn't ask Fran Mill to steal. He was going to hopefully hit home runs. Um, you try to put guys in a position where their strengths and if they have weaknesses, you try to minimize those. And that's what we'll do. And we don't know exactly what our roster is going to be next year. But when we get it, we'll get together and we'll try to put them in the best position where we think they'll succeed. Chris, in your role, is it promising maybe to see this young team get this far and get this playoff experience? already under their belt as you're looking ahead to what you can build in this future? It is really exciting as we look forward. The experiences that, that our players gained this year by going through a lot of things for the first time, many of which started with a major league debut and ended which with playing postseason games in Yankee Stadium, there are a lot of experiences along the way that each of those players could benefit from. Now, the important thing is Tito said that we build from here and that you know, there's not a sense of complacency with individuals, with the team, with the organization, and that we continue to work to improve to get better. And I'm, I'm confident that will happen, but it is exciting to think about where we can go from here. With Jose, um, obviously has the, has the injury and have surgery, but I think that happened in June. I mean, what does that speak to the fact that he was able to play through that and was there ever a, a situation where you thought, well, maybe you should take some time, or was he just ready, ready, ready to go? Yeah, I'll actually let Tito start with this because he was, uh, he has a good way of describing it. He was in, you know, L.A. in that conversation with Jose. You know, during the, there was a game in L.A. where he had a Zoom meeting with our medical people, and I believe it was uh, Dr. Uh, Graham, mm -hmm. who's kind of the godfather of that stuff, and we have a lot of respect for his opinions. And about the second, third inning, James Quinn came out and he thought they were they were getting ready to schedule a surgery and all that. And I was making notes on my lineup card about what I wanted to tell our guys. And then about the seventh inning, James came back and he's like, you know, he goes, I'm not sure this is a foregone conclusion because we've spent more time talking about it. When the game was over, Hosey came in and he told me, he said, not only am I not having surgery, but I'm playing tomorrow. And I ripped up my notes that I had for the guys and he never... I don't, as much as we talk about Hosey, I don't know if people know how tough he is. This kid did it with a, with not 10 fingers. It was, 
you know, he got treatment every day. And I know when it got cold and he got jammed, it didn't feel good. Was, what specifically was, like you said, tend, was it a finger that specifically wasn't feeling great? Did, was it? He had a torn ligament in his, his UCL ligament and his thumb. Yeah. Yep. And that affects everything else. So. Especially when you get jammed, it didn't feel too good. It did affect him hitting both right-handed and left-handed. I've never seen a guy that's that good approach the game the way he does. I mean, most times you see a, a, a guy on third base on another team, the other team is trying to figure out a way where they don't have to have him slide at the plate for potentially a, a collision or something. We couldn't keep Hosey anchored down at third. <laughs> like, he's, you know, the dirtier he is, the happier he is. And, Fortunately, he's ours. Hammy said uh, in an interview that he thinks that that day on the runway in, the, in Goodyear kind of just flipped the switch when Hosey, you know, decided, "Hey, I'm I'm staying Cleveland. This is, you know, this is my team. We're doing this." You guys agree that that, that was kind of a moment where like everybody's kind of spirit kind of jumped up and, and took this team to the next level. Yeah, in our view, that was not only an important moment that set the foundation for this season, but for years to come. So, for all the reasons Tito outlined. You know, the type of player that Hosey is, the way he plays the game, the standard that he sets for others, that's a really good starting point as we think about the identity of our teams moving forward because, you know, when you, when you're, Tito often says this, when your best player is also your hardest worker and, you know, does all the little things, it makes it a lot easier as young players come up or others to, to point to him and say, that's, that's what we expect. Can you speak to how happy you were that Shane was able to throw 200 innings this year, given what he, he went through a year ago? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's a testament to Shane's work. Um, and he and he overcame a lot. You know, he had that injury for the, the first significant injury of his career last year. Um, and he had to work to get himself back to a point where he was, again, one of the most effective pitchers in the American League. And to do that and pitch 200 innings, I think there were only eight other pitchers that threw that many innings, is um, really a testament to, to Shane, his commitment, and his dedication. And, and how about from Tristan? You know, the biggest step forward this year is he, he put together a really solid season. Where did he do something that, that kind of let you know, hey, this guy is capable of being a, a staple in our rotation? His in-between work, the days he wasn't pitching, um, got a lot more consistent, which I think led directly to him being more consistent. Didn't see as many fluctuations in his velocity as maybe we had in the past. And it's not that he's not a hard worker. He wasn't a hard worker. It's just I think young players, and especially good young players, they see that they have another gear. And as they find it, it starts to get exciting. And then you put in confidence and, and hard work and results and – you start to see what people were talking about for years with him. It's fun to watch the progression. Just the 30,000 foot view, there's a lot of rule changes coming for next year. Do you think the game is going to look dramatically different than it has? No. And I haven't actually, for good reason, spent a lot of time thinking about the rules because we, we didn't play under them this year. I think, uh, no, I think the game adapts quickly real quickly and whether you like them or you don't or you like some of them or you don't players and us we 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 adjust quickly good all right thank you everyone